Good afternoon, people of the Roller Derby Internet, and welcome back to Anarchy 7 here at Crystal Palace. Uh, or welcome, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, this stream. I'm Loud and Queer. I'm joined by... Gene Crazy. And we are joined on production by the lovely Beatrix. Uh, and we are going to go into game five of the first day of Anarchy uh, with Rainy City Roller Derby uh, versus Crime City Rollers. So it is my pleasure to take you through Rainy City Roller Derby, uh, playing in the purple with white accents. We have 0-2, Nepo Baby, 1-1, one, one, it's a no from me, 2-4, Rolo, 2-9, Penny Block, 3-1-6, Uma Thumpin, 3-8, Crispy Bats, 6-6-9, six, six, Dr. Ildo, 7, well up for it, 7-0-4, Bunt with a C, 7-5, Short Little Mole, number one, 7-7, seven, seven, Liz is how we do it. I don't know if that's meant to be sung, but I did it anyway. Uh, eight Little Fish, eight one Fairy Quake, eight seven three Norley, and eight eight Banshee. And skating for Malmo's Crime City Rollers in the yellow, we have zero zero three zero Demawa, zero three zero Ellie, zero four Vilda, zero seven Nasty, one Below Me, one zero zero Curly, one one two Polytrauma, one two Whitelin, one six three Yaz, two three Rhino. 304 Nuggan, 440 Tinker, 56 Reggae, 90 Fenella Slice, and 974 Astrid. And both these teams have come off uh, with a win uh, earlier on today. So we had uh, Rainy City against Toulouse, who won 238 to 123. And then we had quite an interesting game, Crime City Rollers versus Helsinki, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, I saw, I saw some of it, and it was, I think at one point I looked, it was 32-0. I then nipped, nipped out, came back, and it, sorry, 32-32, sorry. I came back, and it was in 69-32 to in favour of Crime City who went on to win 263-111. It does tend to happen when you've got jammers of the likes of Curly Hoare and uh, Reggae on your team, who both put up absolute monster jams earlier. Um, so, it was, yeah, it was a really close game, uh, Crime, Crime City and Helsinki, first of all, and then Crime really, really picked it up. But these two that we're about to meet on track are, of course, old friends, old enemies. Uh, that frenemies. <laughs> frenemies. Frenemies of the Rollers RB World. It is going to be a really wonderful day, to, uh, wonderful game, to close out a wonderful day of anarchy. I've got my words all in a tangle because we just had a very intense game, uh, yes. London versus Toulouse. If I had any nerves left, they are well and truly shredded. And I am sure that will happen again in this game. Can't wait. We will switch over to the track in just a second so you don't have to look at our glorious faces anymore. Here we go. Uh, we have Curly Hoare and well up for it, the jammers for this first one. Beautifully lit in the sunlight here at Crystal Palace. So both jams. Curly Hall is the first one to get through with the lead jam. And well, up for it has taken yeah. the star down, but it's the star stash gets through on the inside line, completes the initial pass as Curly comes in. Nice, quick, four points, hit it and quit it. Yeah, and Crime just so quick to quickly uh, divide up Rainy City's wall there, hold them kind of one on one, and they dominate that pace in the first jam. Yeah. Don't forget, you can tweet in using the hashtag Anarchy7. And we do encourage you to do so, people of the Roller Derby world. And speak a person of the Roller Derby world, Wild Cherry Hev, tweeted earlier today, was watching from South Australia. Amazing. That's brilliant. Of course, if you are enjoying the stream, it is not too late to encourage your friends, family and tolerable colleagues to purchase passes. <laughs> Even the intolerable ones. Yeah. We're not fussy. We have Vanilla Nice and Norley out for jam number two. Norley... Uh, picks up the no pass, no penalty, but does clear the pack. You can see her coming around in the top left of so your screen. Lee Jammer is still open for Vanilla Slice, and there it is. Now, yeah. the interesting thing is, do you call it, or do you think, well, they're scoring points. Let's see if we can match it and get a 4-4 jam here. I mean, that involves thought processes, which is not my strong suit, and also I'm not a jammer, so I'll just do, I'll just do what my bench tells me. That's As a bench coach, I like that from jammers. Do what you're told. I mean, I'm a blocker. I never do what I'm told. <laughs> anyway, that puts up the first four points for Rainy City All-Stars um, and Crime adding four to that. So 8-4 in jam two. And a nice little crush being set up on the jam line. All smiles from Fairy Quake wearing the star for Rainy City. It's always all smiles from Fairy Quake. Yeah, to be fair, I've never seen them uh, look 
anything but absolutely delighted about, about jamming or playing roller derby. Pretty much. And that is reggae on the line for Crime City. But that is very quick out. That is the first lead jammer for Rainey. They were first out of the pack last time, but the no pass, no penalty. Yeah, look how quick Reggae is to take that star off, pushing against a really nice fluid tripod of Rainey at the front. The pivot is a long way behind, so it's a stash rather than a potential pass at the moment. There's lots of penalties for all sorts. Fairy Quake has definitely gone to the box. Have both jammers gone to the box? Fairy Quake I has picked so. up a back block. Reggae is now joining her, so Fairy Quake off your screen is standing. You can see her now returning to track on the straightaway. That means we will run for a full two minutes. Neither jammer eligible to call the jam off. This fairy picks up four points. And for those of you perhaps watching Roller Derby for the first time, you might think, what happens when two jammers go to the box? Well, the second jammer who arrives will only sit the same amount of penalty time as the first jammer has already sat. Hence why both those jammers return to track very quickly. So there was uh, no pass, no pe penalty on that last one, which why Fairy picked up three points rather than four. But seven points and counting in this jam. Lovely little scrum going on here with the blockers waterfalling round. Great offense there from Crispy number Bats. Crispy Bats is battering Crime City. Not my strongest pun, I'll grant you, but it's late in the day, so. It works. Reggae does manage. Oh, air miles from Fairy Quake. But the door was shut in the face. And on your screen, we see uh, Reggae coming round with two to beat. Lovely patient jamming there from Reggae. Does get three, picks up four points. As Rainey's offence trying to open up the points for Barry. Did so. And Crispy Bats just did enough to keep Reggae behind to stop Reggae scoring on that pass. It feels, I mean, I know it's, uh, you know, you, teams aren't comparable and, you know, games run different dynamics. But it's so interesting to think back to the London uh, Toulouse game, which was so fast and furious, and yet in that power jam it was very considered, very calm, a lot of thinking time going on. And I think both these teams are on their second game of the day, tired legs, they don't want to be getting into penalty spirals. So I'll be interested to see how these two very experienced teams change up the dynamics in situations like power Absolutely. jams where they really can't run the risks. Little timeout, which I think just added four more points to Rainy City's total. That was 15 on the jam for Rainy City and four for Crime City. So we currently have scores of 19 to Rainy City, who are in the purple, and 12 to Crime City Rollers in the yellow. Do love a kind of complementary colour. I don't know if purple and yellow are technically complementary. I'm not an artist, but I like the contrast. It pleases me aesthetically. Makes it easier for us to tell them apart, that's for sure. And that is, it's a no, oh no, it's well up for it. So I'm getting mixed up with these new exciting names that the Rainy City roster have put out. It's well up for it with space on the outside, but just pit to it by Ellie out on their first jam for Crime City this game. So, you know what you were saying about fast packs not happening? Yeah, I jinxed it, didn't I? Yeah. The power is within me. LA decides, doesn't fancy a foot race, call it off, let somebody else have a go. Sounds about right. So if you are just joining us on this stream, or indeed if you've been watching this stream not really knowing what's going on, we have 10 games over two days this weekend, and each of these teams that you currently see will have uh, one more game tomorrow. Don't ask me against who, that information is not in my brain right now, but I will tell you later. Rainy City, I'm sure, are playing Helsinki. And I've got a feeling Crime City are playing to lose. Sounds about right. Sounds like some good European roller derby for me. And speaking of good European roller derby, there goes our Lord and Saviour, Curly Hall, picking up lead status for Crime City rollers. And Curly doing what Curly's done for years. Picking up lead. Scoring points. Being cool. Yeah, pretty much. Norley snarled up a little bit behind Crime City. Takes a little hit to the floor, pops back up. Some strong work at the front, a combination of Astrid and Nasty holding Norley back there. As Curly takes a tumble, 
and that is going to be a back block haul on Curly Hall. We are now at a power jam situation for Rainy City and a two minute jam to boot. Yeah. Interesting work, what you saw, there's Rainey just knocking off one of the Crime City blockers, taking them out, making it easier for Norley to get through and pick up that four points virtually untouched as the jammer and a blocker yeah, are Rain in the box. Rainey doing some nice kind of one-on-one -on -one pack work there, each picking a blocker. But we have a track cut on Norley, so it's going to be a little jammer switcheroo. Curly was standing in the box ready to go, so she had under 10 seconds to serve. That means that Norley will sit just under 30 seconds on this penalty, I believe, if my maths is correct. Both jammers are on scoring passes. And another cut called on Curly. This is not usual for Curly Hall. She is statistically very clean. I think that was Nepo Baby that mm. was the one that drew the cut. Yeah, smart work there by Rainy City. Oh, was it uh, Short Little Mole? Yeah, Beatrix is correcting us there. We, we do love to be absolutely. corrected, so continue to do that, please, B. We There's absolutely no doubt we'll keep you busy. <laughs> Ooh, so points going up for both jammers in the dying seconds of that jam. Seven on the jam for Rainy City, five for Crime City. And yeah, it just feels a little bit off, doesn't it? I don't know how to how else yeah. to explain that in words that make sense. I think both teams are still kind of feeling themselves out and finding out how they match up against each other. When I say off, just to clarify, I am not saying this isn't great rollers RB. I'm just saying I don't think stylistically we've seen the best of both these teams so far yet because they are two super Herb, European powerhouses. This is the jammer matchup I like to see. Very Quake and Vanilla Slice. Very Quake does have lead. Vanilla Slice finding that inside hits the uh, Uma Thumpin. And Vanilla Slice fighting again in a pack. That's Penny Block anchoring that. And Vanilla Slice has picked up a penalty. So. Running the jam long by Fairy Quake has worked out for Rainey on this occasion. Yeah, it's so a four arms going to Vanilla Slice, Slice there. Three jammer penalties and two jams for crime. Not so typical. Fairy deciding, having a bit of a tough time with Baloney and Polytrauma. Decides, I you know what, we'll call it, we'll have a power start. I think um, the lovely Beatrix has made a good point about what I was saying about we're not seeing the stylistic best of either of these teams so far and I think they don't want to let this run with them and run these jams long and you know kind of be conservative with it at the moment because these are teams who will historically put up very high scores yeah these are as you said these are probably the two best teams in Europe at the minute oh big old fall that that is Bunt for, for the C on the power start does pick up lead find the outside vanilla slice though waste no time coming back from the box yeah. barely touches the rainy city blockers to complete the initial you could say vanilla slice through the pack hey you could um, and you did and <laughs> i applaud you for it you're probably the only one how many puns can we make in a single game? Place your bets on Twitter. Use the hashtag <laughs> Anarchy7. See how I segued into that. That's very nicely done. Just very quickly, I do want to give a huge thank out to all of our officials, photographers, volunteers, medics, NSOs, tech, DJs, coaches, skaters, truck repair crew, the people doing the food, the merch stands. Yeah, really, we're, I mean, I know the phrase is it takes a village, but really it, take, it takes a role of Derby League. Uh, we put a lot of effort into putting this weekend together and we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Oh, well up for it. Picks up the track cut. And, and a track cut also going to Ellie. So we're going to have our second jammer switcheroo. Another power jam situation because, of course, we will only have one jammer in play now. Both are still on the initial. Now, sorry, Crime City do have the pack advantage. Door slammed shut by Yas. Yas. Is well up for it. Went for the apex jump. Well up for it. Takes a little step 
to the in. Does one hand down beautifully well. Second time round, has to reset behind uh, one of the Crime City blockers. That's Dean Hour. So it's three on three in the pack now. Both Gemma's still on the initial pass. And what? it's stopped. Rollo comes out, tries to offer the offense to try and free well up for it. Ellie with the little shirt whip tries to get some purchase, but again, Rainy City's reformation there is just textbook. Eventually, well up for it does get through, completes the initial pass, despite the best efforts of Yaz. Ellie looking for Yaz now, taken to the out and forced to reset again. This is, do you know what? This is the kind of gnarly derby that I like. It's just the blockers having a good old time and the jammers not being able to fully figure stuff out. Okay, well, as I say that, well up for it. Thought she figured it out, but picks up another track cut. Yikes. So it's definitely been quite a lot of power jams and penalties for jammers. Nice so little far. hop there on the outside from Ellie to now complete that initial. Ooh, I'm exhausted after that jam. That feels like a lot happened in a very short space of time. Six points go to Rainy City, though, uh, with well up for it, iced in the box for the start of the next jam. And judging by the fact that there is nobody on yellow and track, as we see Yas shutting the door on well up for it and then shrugging off the counter block. Yeah, Yas, Yas is uh, not like awareness is so good. We're in a timeout. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly chat about someone who we've been really proud to uh, support at Anarchy this weekend, um, which is Gendered Intelligence. Uh, you will have seen, if you've been on the stream, uh, a kind of QR code that comes up in the, the intervals, the half times. Uh, so Gendered Intelligence is a charity that works to increase understanding of gender diversity, to improve trans people's quality of life. Uh, they're really importantly, they're trans-led and they work at grassroots uh, levels to involve trans people in the work they do. And we're just really proud that we can give them a platform at Anarchy. We do encourage you, if you have even just a couple of spare pounds that you could put in their digital pockets, keep an eye out for the QR code on the stream efforts between games. Uh, we'd really appreciate your support. And considering that CCR on, we do accept Corona as well. We do. We accept, you know, all... all I mean, I don't, I don't really know about things like Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because <laughs> I'm not particularly up with the kids regarding that kind of stuff. Same. But if you've got money and you can give it to us via QR code, please do so. Anyway, so starting on the power start, who else are you going to put out other than Curly Hall? I mean, you could put out Reggae, but yeah, no, statistically, you're going to put out Curly Hall, aren't you? So who yeah. takes a little seat behind 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. Liz is how we do it. It's a superb name, and I will sing it every time. But avoiding the hit of It's a No From Me as well up for it. Beautiful move round the outside. Just stays in bounds. Wait a second. We well have up. two loops. Oh, no, he corrected himself. Yeah, I did hear the double whistle, and I got very confused. I was like, are we in the next round? So, of course, there can only be one lead jammer. There can be only one. There can be only one. I'm just having a quick glance at penalties. And as you would expect, it's pretty mixed. Uh, zero 07 Nasty on Crime City is already on four penalties with only a quarter of game time elapsed. Now, Nasty puts a real shift in. Let's be honest. Like, they are everywhere on track. So, it's no surprise, perhaps, that they're getting called on the things they're doing, but they better watch themselves. They're a real anchor in that Crime City wall. Absolutely. And Bunt with a C picks up Lee Jammer. Yeah, nice little shirt whip enabling that momentum whip. And the star stash from Reggae allows them to complete their initial. As there's a couple of rainy blockers on, like just one. Penny block returns to track. Rollo will go and sit in the box. I'm just going to run, if you don't mind, I'm going to run through our officials for this game. Yeah, absolutely, go for it, so because they've done uh, a sterling job. Absolutely. Our skating officials are Homo You Didn't, Jean-Claude Grand Slam, Wanda Zebra, Tony Terraway, Stephen Liner Douglas, Haymaker and Stormy, and our NSO, Stegatha Christie, Fear Leader, Mike Giver, Pretty Miffed, Skategoat, Agricola, Colonel Panic, Penalty, 
8, Halavata, Sweetness and Fight and Mina Harker. We have Vanilla Slice and Norley on the jam line. Lovely little toe stop pop there from Vanilla Slice to stay in bounds. Pick up lead status for crime. But not got much of a gap. Norley's not far behind. Something that Rainey have been able to do well when crime have picked up lead. They've managed to get their Gemma out fairly quickly. Mm, and Norley had an absolute blinder of a game earlier in the day. So they'll have that, that good old adrenaline driving them around. Not quite fast enough to pick up points in this case. Vanilla slice, three points. Do you know what? I, I, can't, I can't say this with any absolute mathematical certainty, but I can't remember the last time that I ha saw Rainey leading crime for this long. Like, Rainey's been in the lead for most of this game, and it's not a big lead, but it's a lead. Yeah, it's... It's exciting. I think one of the things that is perhaps hurting crime is that Hannah Pay, one of their key jammers, unfortunately is not here this weekend. I mean, what, what's they... also hurting is well up for it, who's picked up Lee Jammer once more for Rainey. Yeah. Well up for it is just an absolute machine. Loves speed, loves power, loves picking up points, which she does very quickly. Ellie still on the initial with the star in hand, comes up against Uma Thumpin, who twirls, twirls, twirls again. Somehow stays upright. Well up for it. A little bit slow getting up, but pops back up. It was almost like checking to make sure. Is that a penalty and we're going to get pink? No, OK, I'll keep going. And the jam was called, but did Ellie sneak in at the back of the pack and pick up any points? Yes, they did. Picked up a couple. Wow. I feel like and that I'm getting almost distracted by the speed of the jammers in this game. I want to have a look at the blockers in this next jam and see what they are doing to try to shave seconds off these absolute powerhouses who are thigh to thigh on the jam line, Curly Hall and Norley. So three on two pack advantage for Rainey. Do you see Curly doing almost like a little bit of defensive jamming? Mm -hmm. She is pushing Norley into that two wall. Yaz is in the two wall as pivot. And, I... and that's what Curly was trying with the two mm. in the penalty box, knocking Norley out to the outside. And you know, some people might roll their eyes about an eating the baby move, which is when the, a jammer pulls the other jammer back all the way around the track. It is very old school, but here it's being done to burn those blocker penalties. Yeah, which it has done. It <coughs> <coughs> oh, that nearly backfired. <coughs> No, how will it, no, you're not Leeds. Can't be lead yet. Nobody's lead yet. They've not completed the initial. Mm -hmm. Well, a double whistle has gone. Two double whistles have gone, but they've also both been rescinded. I think a little bit, the backwards derby and the heat and the sun has just confused people. Rules are confusing. As far as I'm aware, there is not a lead yet because neither has completed Please. their initial pass. And so that's what you see the pack trying to do is to... Get that top position. This is how we do it with a nice take out and draw back, although illegally, on Curly Hall. Both jammers now in the pack, and it's almost like we've, you know, with, we're one minute 30 into the jam. Uh, on our overlay, Norley has been called lead, but I'm, I'm not comfortable making that assessment at the moment. Curly Hoare has gone to the box. I think it was a back block. I heard the back block being called, but didn't hear the number. Now, now Norley's lead. I've never been so confused in my life, and I'm confused a lot, so that's saying something. Thank goodness I'm not a ref. Yeah, there's a reason why I'm sat here with a microphone and not down there with stripes and a whistle. I mean, I have to... You know, I'm sure people have talked about this on the stream already. I have nothing but respect for the ref crews here oh, this absolutely. weekend. Because this is the biggest derby event in the UK since pre-pandemic times. Like this is in terms of like the number of skaters, the height, the level of the skaters. We had we had five nations back in August, which was, you know, a great back on track event. 
but the speed and the dynamics of these teams must be absolutely grueling to ref after a long day on skates. So I have nothing but respect to them. And if, and if occasionally the rules become a little tangled, hey, we're only human, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is, this referee's crew, I think this is their third game of the day. Mm -hmm. And it is warm in this hall. Yes. Anyway, I'd like to also talk about, for people who are listening, and I'm sure there's lots of you, and if some of you might be uh, local or local-ish to London and think, hey, I want to be as cool as these people on track. And if you've ever wanted to learn roller derby or think you might want to now, you have an opportunity coming up because London Roller Derby's next fundamentals intake is coming up soon. You can follow us on uh, social media if you just put Ro London Roller Derby into any of your socials. We will come up. And we've got a fundamental session on May the 7th, which is next Sunday, so a week tomorrow. Um, please do have a look and come along if you are local or local-ish. I, I live in Buckinghamshire and I still skate with London, so you don't have to live in London to skate with us. We're very, we're very inclusive. So I couldn't help but smile. A little, a little bit of a throwback with the Crime City Rollers chant going on. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm only listening to the voices. I was going to say the voices in my head, but I'm saying the voices in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Which, on my headphones. But so we've gone from a rainy city team timeout now to an official timeout. I'm wondering if there's potentially discussions about, about the penalty. I'm wondering if there's discussions about... Well, I'm sure there'll be discussions about the lead status calls in the last jam, and I'm probably just clarifying that as well. We can see uh, Steve Ull, the bench for Crime City, having a little chat to... Uh, Curly and Yass, that Curly is. And Yass. It was Yass he was talking to a bit more about the penalty that they got. Because that will be... Uh, I'm just thinking how many Yass is on. Yass is on two now. But this will be a power start for Rainey and Ferry, I think. So they've been... Teams so far have been even on the amount of lead jammers, but there's been... Rainey have had four power jams. And this will be the fifth power jam for Rainey here. Thanks for those excellent stats, lovely Beatrix. Wouldn't know where we would be without you. And that might go some way into explaining the current 31-point differential. Mm -hmm. Only some way, not all of it. Curly but Hall re-entering play as Uma Thumpin takes a seat in the box for Rainey City. Penny block. It just doing a stellar job there with Little Fish. Banshee in the was pack. there as well. Banshee just did a great takeout on Curly to stop Curly doing the same thing that they did earlier and taking Fairy back, Fairy Quake back a long, long way. Forearm called on a Rainy City blocker. That is Banshee. Uh, that is Banshee. Yeah. But you know that's a you know penalties happen. Oh, brilliant toe stop work and spin from Curly Hall to get round the outside. That's the initial pass completed. So that's, you know, they held Curly in that pack for a good 30 seconds after they completed that penalty, which is no mean feat. Big up Rainy City on that last jam. Ferry trying to run down the time on the penalty, left it slightly too late. So Curly managed to pick up a couple of points. Ah, but Rainy got four, so mathematically, who's the real winner? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think anyone is ever a winner mathematically, but that's because <laughs> I hate numbers. Except, I mean, I know. No, I like, that's why a, are you involved in this sport, well, then, no, if you don't like I love numbers. roller derby stats. I don't like numbers in any other context, essentially. We have reggae out with the stars. Seems like a while since we've seen them. And Bunt with a C, though, uh, right through the inside to pick up lead for Rainy City. So reggae is out about the length of the straightaway behind, give or take. Very Crime's spread out pack in the top apex. Yeah, Crime City trying to take the front to protect the points. But Astrid got caught at the back. Yeah, it just it seemed a little weird that crime was so, so spread out because you're running the risk of the jammer smoking you one-on-one. -on -one. So it's a real trust in your blockers in the nearer to the pack to hold that jammer down. Oh, one-one. One-two. One-two, one-two. 
Sounds Christ. like we're testing the mics, but we are actually saying the score. Saying, saying the points picked up. It's Crime City without lead, but managed to steal the jam win. As we have well up for it, number seven for Rainey. Up against number nine zero, Fenella Slice for Crime City. He picks up Lee Jammer, despite the best efforts of Uma Thumpin, oh, who now has the star. Very nice, quick star pass off from Rainey. We've not seen them use a lot of star passes this weekend. Um, they, they had quite a few going to um, Abby Black earlier um, in, the, yeah, in the other game. I'm saying the earlier game, it's defunct. So that was Crime's first lead in four jams. Now we're and getting a nice little replay there. That shirt whip from Vanilla Slice around the outside of Uma Thumpin. And Uma Thumpin is not easy to get around. No. Believe you me. Legs for days. So interesting fact about Uma Thumpin. She's the only person to win the European Cup in the WFTDA and MRDA side. She's my hero. I love her. I know, I know her in person. I'm allowed to say that. It's not weird. Yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. So Reggae and Fairy Quake out there. Nepo Baby, who is Abby Black. Sorry, I should have clarified that and used the name on the roster. And short little mole number one up there. Well, Abby Black, I've just done it. Nepo Baby will go to the box. And that's another lead for Crime City and Reggae. We have... A scoring pass completed for Reggae. Very Quake has removed the star, now completes the initial. So we're speeding up into that apex again. I did jinx it earlier when I said we were seeing this kind of slow, grindy derby. We're now seeing the Zum Zum derby, technical term. Zum Zum, yep. Yeah. You see Reggae trying to pick up the points. And does so. Picks it up. Picks up three points. I wonder if we will see Rainey kind of conserve that style a little bit because again, if they if they're running these fast packs, they're getting stretched out into ones and twos. And if you put Rainey in a three wall, they are so hard to get past. But with the speed of the Crime City Jammers, like if you if you slalom yourselves, if you put yourself in that slalom position, they will they will take you out. So we have Vanilla Slice and Bunt with a C. It is a four and three pack advantage. It's Yaz as pivot for Crime City. Did pick up a cut at the end of the previous jam. Rhino with a great hold in the back of that Crime City pack. Bunt with a C finding a little bit of room. But also finding below me, which is... Not a fun thing to find when no. you're jamming and they're blocking. A little bit of daylight on the outside. Vanilla Slice shut down by Uma Thumpin. Something that's been a signature of Rainey's play all day is how quickly they reform. Mm -hmm. When a blocker is picked off or knocked out or down, they're very quick to get back up and get back in position. Not or as like quick as Vanilla Slice, though, <laughs> in that last bit with the inside line just with an inch. Oh, what a beautiful... Hey, miles. That was gorgeous. Bunt with a C, with one to be at the front. That is Yas, who's making life really difficult. Yas says no. Joined by Nagan as well. The, the, do you know what? I think I've seen this in all the teams this weekend, but two walls are becoming such a key feature of roller derby at this level. Yes. Like, you can tell that the teams have been drilling them, and it's, it's come up in every game beautifully. Great work there by Crime at the front. Oh my goodness, we have just under four minutes left in this half. Crime, like, look at this score. Like, this is an incredibly low scoring game. 61 to 46. Yeah. This feels different. Rainey have been held scoreless for three jams. So Crime getting a little bit of that magic back that they have. But we've not seen these blowout jams that really characterized Crime's game against Helsinki earlier. Yeah, I mean, what we've seen in the last few jams, I think the difference is the lack of power jams that Crime have conceded. Mm -hmm. And looking at the last four jams, I think it's 17 points to one in favour of Crime when they can keep their jammers on track. 
well up for it, is having a little bit of trouble, but... And, a lot of trouble. And is being given a, I believe that's an illegal contact penalty, but I didn't quite see uh, the ref's signal. But they are in the box. Reggae is on a power jam for Crime City. And here's Rainey with that three all at the front. It is moving, but it's in formation. That's Nepo baby. It's a no from me, and this is how we do it. And they're still rolling on forward. Reggae looking a little bit gassed, looking a little bit tired, and I would too if I was having to come up against these players again and again. So picks up lead, but picks up the cut at the same time. That's multitasking for you. I think it was as the lead was called. I think I thought they were free to go. Who, who can truly say what jammers ever think? They're, they're skating too fast to think. Anyway, well up for it. Has been released from the box. It is a full two-minute power jam now. Takes a hit, pops back up. And... Pockets four points. Yeah. And well up for it. Just shaving a little bit of speed off. She's an incredibly powerful jammer. But I think she's aware that with the penalties the way they are at the moment, she can't fly into the pack with it, it, gay abandon, as it were. Yeah, it's like controlled aggression. Yeah. Trying to find some yeah. fights their way through. Really, really smart jamming there from well up for it. Like, just adapted her, her style to stay on the track safely after her penalty. So, yeah, well up for it in the earlier game against Toulouse, put up a 23 and a 24 point jam. She's a monster. She's still, an absolute monster. I think, are the highest scoring jams that we've had this weekend. Uh, uh, 15 points is the highest in this game so far. Yeah, I want to say there were maybe a couple of slightly bigger jams, but you're right, like they, they're definitely up there in the, in the echelons of jam stardom. 69 to Rainy City All-Stars, 46 to Crime City Rollers. And I, I'm i really, you know, I mean, I say I'm enjoying this game, but I'm also, I'm intrigued by this game. That's yes. what I feel. I feel intrigued because I feel like both teams are still going, hmm, about each other. I don't think there's ever, I don't think I've seen a jam where the teams have been like, yes, that was absolutely it. That was what we wanted to do. Yeah, I think both teams are still trying to impose themselves and trying to play their way, but it is very much back and forth so far. Of course, don't forget, these games are sanctioned. They are WFTDA sanctioned. It will affect rankings. And if the, a win's a win, do you know what I mean? Like they, A win at this point, I think, is more important than putting up these massive, massive jams. Yes. But I don't know, you know, it could all change in the second half, of course. Of course. We are in an official review at the moment. So we have, we have a lovely shot of our track, of our officials uh, in a little huddle on the left, our track repair crew, our house announcers, our team, our audience. It's really good to be back at a big derby event, isn't it? And just yeah. watch the highest quality of European roller derby that, that Europe has to offer. It is such a privilege to be back here. So we're going to try to bring you the results of that official review. Uh, just bear with us. We don't have sound down on stream in the venue. And as you can see, we're, we're a little bit higher up than the house announcers. So if we don't have it, we will try to bring it to you after this jam. Scrum start. Curly Hall finds some daylight. And it is a power jam. Norley picking up a back block. Uh, in the start of that jam. And here's where the danger zone starts to open up because Curly Whore on a power jam is not what you want. No. I'm Unless you're on their team, it's, which yeah, case is absolutely what you want. I think, I, to, I think the official review, so it was called by crime, but I didn't see any change to the score or anybody in and out of the box. I assume think, whatever yeah. they wanted was not successful on this occasion. Yeah, I'm sure we will get the results of that from our producer, the lovely Beatrix. And if not, life goes on, dear, dear, dear viewers on the internet. Nothing changes. 
Uma Thumpin throwing in some offense there for Norley. Curly all looking uh, like quite slow at the back, but I think she's taken her sweet time to find that space her toe stops love so much. Oh. Are you? That's not, no, that's not physical. The laws did of Curly physics Hall do not allow that to happen from Curly Hall. Did Curly Hall do defy physics again? She does yes. do that quite a lot. Oh, Uma Thumpin now has received the star pass for the second time this game. What a dream. And that will be almost certainly the last jam of the period. And I think we have a new high scoring jam, 16 points, which closes the gap to, to seven, seven points. points. That's the kind of maths I can do. <laughs> Yikes. So we are going to take a... <coughs> excuse me, a 10 minute break and we will be back with you very shortly. Do not go anywhere. This game is a banger. See you very soon. Welcome back to the second half of the final game of Anarchy 7, hosted by London Roller Derby. I am King Crazy. I'm Loud and Queer. We're joined by the lovely Beatrix on production. And it is the, it's the last game for day one. But we have got five more games for you tomorrow, dear people of the Roller Derby internet, because we love you and because you've paid for it. So, um, <laughs> King Crazy, do you want to talk us through some of the stats from that last half? Because that was an interesting half. Yeah, I mean, we sat here, obviously, the key stat is the score, which is 69-62 in favour of Rainey. But Crime City have had 20 penalties to Rainey 17. And Rainey have had six power jams to Crime City's three. It's, it does go away to explaining this very, very tight scoreline because I said in the first half that it's, you know, we, these teams have met each other many times uh, over the years and Crime City does tend to come out on top and they tend to come out with a reasonably big differential. But I'm living for this. I love a tight game. I love a game that causes each team to not like rely on their style of play like they're yeah. having to make seriously on the fly adaptations but i do think as well those power those jammer penalty spirals on both teams have really impacted the flow of the game curly hoare speaking of jammers takes a big hit on the track norley almost swimming through this crime city pack and picks up lead status for rainy city all-stars Curly has the star in hand and is swinging it around, but Yas doesn't look like they're particularly wanting to take the star at the moment. They're too busy trying to stop Norley getting through. I mean, even if you've got the star in hand, if you're Curly Hort, like you still want to be that jammer because she's so good at it. Norley. Superb little sweep, oh. sorry, from short little mole number one. Absolutely superb sweep to open up to allow the points to be scored. And although Curly does complete the initial, Norley calls the jam. And that takes Rainy City to 73, Crime City holding at 62. We hope you've really enjoyed this day. It's been a real pleasure to I kind have, of... thank you. Yeah, you specifically. We did this for you, King Crazy. Absolutely. Like, never mind the almost 200 people who have brought stream passes who are hopefully still with us. Yeah, it's good to be the king. <laughs> We have Fairy Quake and Vanilla Slice. Oh, that toe stop work from Vanilla Slice, but Fairy Quake just inches in front to pick up the lead. I was really hoping you were watching how Fairy got through because I was too busy mesmerized by the toe stop work from Vanilla Slice as well. Uh, we can only ever concentrate on one thing as announcers. We can't multitask, what do you mean? It's a foot race as Vanilla races down the inside. Neither Jammer putting up points in that jam, but some time burned off the game clock. So all in all, a lovely time was had. So it's, yeah, time burnt off. It's like, who does that favor? Well, Rainy are winning, but not by enough to be comfortable, not to be enough to be thinking about burning the clock anyway. At the same time, the last game, the, the London Toulouse game, Yeesh. a lot of it was clock burning at the end and it was really smart benching. And it, it kept, it kept London, that, yes. that minimal lead for London out in front. We have well up for it against Reggae. Well up for it, reset in the straightaway. Reggae with two to be at the front, does pick up leads. Uh, oh, well up for it is picking up a forearm, I think. And it should know from me who was the last line of defense against Reggae, picked up the out of play box block, 
was called out of play and carried on trying to stop reggae. So that will give a power jam, but Crispy Bats, one-on-one, -on -one, doing a great job. Uh, As Re Reggae picks up the four points and comes in again looking to see if there's any more points available. Superb drawback work there by yeah, that was, the pivot Yaz. by Yaz. Yeah, just at the last split second, just sprinted back and makes well up for it. Have to go back that little bit further. Well up for it, completes the initial now, and we see this rainy city hold in the apex. Crime City splits them apart temporarily, picks up a single point on that pass and calls the jam. We are in a two-point game. My heart rate is absolutely fine. Thanks for asking. I was going to say, yeah, how's your nails? Oh, my nails are bitten down metaphorically to the quick earlier after the London game. Like, <laughs> fin fingernails have no, have no use for me anymore. Yes, I mean, you mentioned these close games. They're brilliant to watch. They're fantastic to announce. They're not so great to be involved in. We have a very slow-mo start with Curly Hall and Norley. And we've seen this quite a little bit off the jam line when Curly's got the star. She takes that defensive position earlier, finds a beautiful space. And in the meantime, Norley off to the box on a track cut. We're back in the danger zone. And I think we're going to see a lead change in favour of crime. Oh. And we do on this pass with four going up. For the first time in a long old time, Crime City are out in front. That just shows you the strength of Curly Hoare as well. There was Banshee and Uma Thumpin. And Curly just went straight through the pair of them. This time, though, not so lucky as Uma Thumpin with help with the drawback. But blow me with the inside seal. Block me not. Sorry, Penny Block knocked below me down. But it actually still did enough for Curly Hoare to get through. Yeah, that was that was a, a big old hit from Henny Blocker. Crime City with eight on the jam, 79 plus 73. I apologise if the score updates are too much. I know you can see them on your screen, but this is an intense game of switching about. Absolutely. Where are you watching from? Tweet in hashtag Anarchy7. I want to know where people are watching. And we want to see pictures of your pets. Yes, in that order. <laughs> Tell us where you are and who your pets are. Yes. Dogs and Derby, please. So just uh, to give you a heads up for tomorrow, I mean, you might have been on the stream with us all today, but uh, we have a couple of different teams tomorrow. We've got uh, Birmingham and Tiger Bay Brawlers having a game each. Both against Stockholm, as it happens. Yeah. Uh, Penny Block was released from the box into that jam, so the penalty was rescinded. Yes, yeah, so a, so four, a forearm rescinded. was issued but rescinded, and I, I have a feeling it's because um, the contact, I think, came from a Crime City skater. Yeah, like it was that, that inside pass with, with below me. Yeah. Very quick, and Vanilla Slice now jamming. Vanilla oh. Slice comes up against Nepo Baby and finds it quite a tough wall to beat. Very quick in the meanwhile, struggling against these lateral movements of Crime City at the back of the pack. Astrid was doing a great job. This time, Fairy does blast through. Oh, does a great toe stop hop and stays just in bounds. But the pack caught Fairy back up and that allowed Vanilla Slice to get out and pick up lead. Yeah. Star pass to Nepo Baby. Nepo uh, Baby, of course, was a junior roller derby skater only a couple of years ago and has really found a new home with Rainy City. They've got a wealth of experience as a younger skater. Used to do a lot of jamming uh, for Team GB. In their youth, they're still in their youth. But you know, they're, they're younger youth. I'm very tired. <laughs> my words aren't my words aren't sophisticated, but that's not why you listen to me. You listen to me because I'm funny. And because you don't have a choice. Words are difficult. Put me on mute if you if you wish. I won't complain. You've bought your pass. <laughs> but no, seriously, thanks for joining us on the stream. We really appreciate it. We have reggae and well up for it. And again, a nice snarly gnarly 
Jam start. Well up for it. Almost finds the in. Puts a toe stop out of bounds and resets. But Reggae, Reggae. does get out. Picks up Lee Jammer. Rainy City have been held scoreless for three jams and counting. And again, this is going back to what we were saying earlier with Crime City basically cleaning up the penalty count, especially with the jammers. Yes, yeah, nice work in that last jam from 04 Vild, uh, uh, Crime City, another aged up junior skater, incidentally, from a few years ago. Um, just doing some really nice one on one holding to clear their jammer through. So. Stockholm. Crime City even uh, are starting to are starting to turn to taking the lead. They're starting to build it. They've had four straight lead jams. They're not having big jams, but it's just as we said, nickel and diamond, penny pinching. They're just not able to have big jams. Rainy aren't letting them. You know, even if they are getting out for the lead, they're not giving up and letting them lap them all the time. They have found that rainy reforming magic. I think. And that's some great work. That's a low block called on It's a No From Me. It was some lovely backward skating, though. It was. <laughs> As Curly Haw and Bunt with a C trying to find their way through. Liz is how we do it with a great kind of anchored hold in the back. Notice how Liz is how we do it is bracing off uh, their... Uh, bracing off their brace, unbelievably. Yeah. Um, but switching arms really effectively to change their positioning. Oh, lovely little nudge out from Dimauer then forcing Bump with the C all the way back as Curly Hall comes back in trying to pick up the points but just put a toe out outside the boundaries of the track so it will be recycled by this is how we do it. Star pass now once again to Nepo Baby. And Curly Hall slow in the pack. Oh, Nepo Baby going, do you know what? Thanks very much, Curly Hall, for showing me those lovely apex jumps earlier. I will do my own. Yes, it's Curly trying to uh, penalty kill because there's two blockers currently in the pack. Curly going on a bit of defensive jamming. Yeah, I do, don't make the mistake, dear viewers, of thinking that Curly Hoare is tired and doesn't want to jam anymore. She knows exactly what she's doing. As four points in the pocket will show. And Yaz and company trying to take back Nepo Baby, but Nepo Baby does get through. That's eight points on the jam for Rainey, according to the board. And that will be a further four going up now for crime. But, you know, a nullified jam, essentially. Yeah, it's interesting for that one. For Rainey, you're happy because you've not got leads. You've done the star, port, star pass and matched the jam. For Crime City, you're happy because you had two blockers in a penalty box. Mm. And you've managed to kill that, get them back out. So we've got five on five to start this jam. So what you're saying is that everyone's happy. Yeah, it's a rare That's moment lovely, where everybody's happy. Everyone's happy except the refs who have to call the penalties because there are quite a few of them. We have Vanilla Slice and Norley. Vanilla Slice, pop, pop, toe stop, hopping around this wall, met by Uma Thumpin and Rollo in a lovely brace two wall there. And just when Norley oh. thought there was some space, there was below me. And some great apparating work there uh, from the Rainy City blockers, but it is Vanilla Slice who does manage to pick up the lead. Norley has removed the star, finds space on the inside to complete the initial. And CCR, this lead is six in a row, six lead jammers in a row. And for most of those jams, they have held Rainy score. That's obviously the last jam we talked about with the star pass. I'm at the stage, the bench coaching me now, if I'm Rainy City, I'm thinking about taking a time out. Help, that's just, I will get this right. Crime City are just starting to build that momentum. Six straight leads, holding Rain, Rainy scoreless in five of those jams. Do you know what, I really like seeing crime challenged at this level though, because there was, there was a time where Crime City and, and European Royal Derby really were unbeatable, yeah. you know, and, and now it, it feels like, not that they're an easily beatable team, but there's potential for it. Even if Rainey ends up losing this game, it has been an absolute grind. And, oh, it's, yes. and, it, and you know, I know we all love Curly Haw doing 34-point passes or however many points you can get within a jam, but it's quite nice to see people like Fairy Quake picking up lead against these really, really excellent skaters 
from Malmo. So some big physical hits going on in that pack. Whether it's trying to clear a space for Ferry to pick up four, or whether it's trying to clear a space for Reggae to complete the initial pass. Lovely hemmed wall there from uh, with 669 uh, Dr. Ildo for Rainy City doing some great track coverage with Liz is how we do it. Look at this hold on Reggae at the back. Yaz coming in with some disruptive offense. Again, the stars have been stashed, but I don't really think Yaz is actually looking to take the star. I think it's more of a distraction than actually... Magic and trickery, smoke and mirrors. No, that's just a shadow, it's not from the camera. Oh, yeah. The sun, the sun is set to the palace. Now we've had the star pass, though. To, and I think that's the first star pass we've seen Yaz actually take. Yeah. Crime City do not tend to need to use the star passes very often, but... It's something it's actually a great with, challenge there. With both of these teams, because they are, they are both very strong teams. They're not in a situation very often where they need to do the star passes. So perhaps are not quite as smooth as maybe some of the teams that we've seen this weekend. I mean, Stockholm star passes are absolutely textbook, but they, you must drill them insanely because they are so well executed. Uma Thumpin and Penny Block try to catch Curly Hall, but you don't need to give Curly Hall a lot of space. She picks up lead for Crime City, who are tantalizingly close to the century mark. Bunt with a C takes off the star. But you see number 23, that is Rhino, trying to get in the way and take Uma, take Uma Thumpin out, trying to separate the pivot and jammer. Uma Thumpin is taken to the outside, resets really nicely. We are in a proper scramble in this turn. And a cut called on Bunt with a C, so that will be a power jam now for Crime City. And Uma Thumpin goes through as well. Bit of friendly fire there, but Curly Hoard does get back up, picks up the four. And a couple of Crime City blockers also in the box. And so a full minute to go in this jam, so Curly Hall could go to work here. Picks up an additional four. Or three. Oh, yeah, sorry, three. Does it's the no pass, no penalty. Thank you very much for correcting me there. Teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, not so much teamwork as me getting it wrong and you correcting me. <laughs> which, which is completely fine because I was very wrong. Uh, we have Bump with the Sea returning to track now. Oh, Curly got caught napping by Uma Thumping. That's a huge hit. And is? No, because Uma Thumping went down, it won't yeah. be a cut. I was just checking, just checking to the refs. Here, here's that big hit coming again. Look at the speed there from Uma Thumping, who has received the star now for Rainey. Is and takes an apex jump. But whistles are being blown. There's an illegal procedure. So I am guessing that Bunt with a C is still the jammer when they picked up a penalty. So because Uma Thumping took the star and made the attempt to put it on, that then becomes an illegal star pass. Mm -hmm. so well, Rainy City are calling, if I'm reading the hand signal correctly, they are calling an official review. I think that's been held off for the moment because there's an official timeout. I think the referees are going to discuss this to try and get their ducks in a row and make sure, because that was, it was a very close thing. I saw the star pass. I then saw Bunt with the C go to the box. I didn't see what happened first. Well, yes, Bump with the Sea is now sitting in the box. Official review has been called. And sitting in the jammer spot in the, in the yeah. box. So we will try to bring you the results of that official review because it is a spicy one. In the meantime, don't forget, we will be back here on the stream tomorrow. At 9 a.m. What else would you be doing at 9 a.m. on a Sunday? Apart from watching Roller Derby because... Talking about Roller Derby. Talking about Roller Derby. Exactly. So tomorrow at... Stockholm and Birmingham, yeah, first thing tomorrow. Which provisional will be at, time, 9 o'clock. Well, that, that one should be on time. Yes. We, we, should, we should be on time. We're running mostly on time. 
So then we have at 11 o'clock, we'll see Helsinki Roller Derby versus Rainy City. At 1 p.m., Stockholm versus Tiger Bay. 3 p.m., we'll see Crime City Rollers versus Nothing to Lose. And the final game at 5 p.m. tomorrow, we'll see Helsinki Roller Derby against London, London Brawling. Our fabulous host this weekend. Oh, we try. We try. It takes, it takes a village. It takes a derby league. Um, but obviously, we couldn't do it without the wonderful people of the Roller Derby world coming together to help us. And it's, it's oh, I get all emotional about Roller Derby events, as anyone who knows me even remotely will know. But I think especially big events like this, where we see people that we haven't perhaps like seen for almost like years come back to watch Roller Derby. Like I've seen some kind of older players who used to skate with a lot of local leagues come back. And it's just really good to have Roller Derby in a sweltering sports hall <laughs> once again. Uh, what else would you want to do on your bank holiday weekend apart from sit inside know, away a from the sun? Bank holiday in the UK and the sun shining. We've got about nine bank holidays this year. So to be honest, you can spend, you can afford to spend at least one of them in a sports hall. That's true. That is very true. So the official review appears to be called, been called by It was Rainy called by Rainy, C. yeah. So I'm guessing this is all to do with the uh, fun and games that with the Star Pass. We believe that Rainy City are looking for a cut track penalty to be issued uh, in the last jam. We can confirm that now that is what Rainy City are asking. I do not know where about this cut track would have taken place, but that is what Rainy City are requesting. So it's nothing to do with the Star Pass shenanigans malarkey, thankfully, because I wouldn't know where to start with that. I wonder if that's what the officials were discussing before we went into the official review. Who we... knows? Who knows the minds of officials? Who knows? We can see our house announcers trying to hype people up. I want to give a bit of a shout out to my, my lovely house crew who have done a stellar job this weekend and to my lovely stream crew as well. To be fair, I have, I have given, I've given you wings, and you have truly flown. So it looks like Spitting Bars is trying to fly, running down the track. They do do that. They, they've got, they've got a lot of extrovert energy, which I do not have. Hence why I'm on stream. Yeah, so because <laughs> I'm in charge. I was like, I'm the introvert in this outfit, and I'm sitting here with headphones on. Thank you very much. Yes, we do have a very sparkly in-house announcer pair. We do. So again, just as just want to give a quick shout out to our officials, photographers, volunteers, medics, NSOs, our text DJs, coaches, skaters, track repair crew, announcers, all the volunteers to help put this on. It is so good to have events like this back again. We've missed it. It's been a while. So our head referee, how many didn't, is speaking to the bench crews. Ah. So there has been, there is, hang on, what's going on here? Originally, it looked like the rainy jammer had been removed from the box. They haven't, they're still there. So, Loud and Queer will, is getting the update from Beatrix shortly. Yeah, bear with us, folks. This is quite a complicated uh, officiating technical thing going on. Uh, so we can see some of the non-skating officials having a chat. Um, you can't see it on screen, but they're having a chat to uh, the Rainy City Jammer from the last jam who is sitting in the box. Uma Thumpin, as the pivot, is also sitting in the box. It looks like it is going to be, therefore, a power start 
in favour of Crime City. We are not entirely sure. We think it's something to do with a star pass violation. But I'm not a mind reader and we don't, we don't have stream down in the main hall, uh, unfortunately. So we are, we are relying on our house announcers to feed that up to us. So thank you very much for your patience. Enjoy the wonderful shot of uh, our Games Tournament Oversight team, NSOs, referees teams and of course audience just going back to what you were saying there so with, with the last jam bunt with a c did pick up a penalty regard forgetting about the star pass there was a penalty picked up by bunt with a c so i'm wondering if that's why they're in the box as a jammer and why uma thumping is in the box as the blocker for the star pass violation because if the penalty was committed before the star was passed that will be that could well be why it could be either way whatever the reasons are rainy city is in a little bit of penalty trouble with two blockers on the box let me just chat with our producer and see what we can get yeah just while loud and queer is doing that i have noticed that another blocker for rainy has sat in the box but yes this is unfortunately we are sat up on a balcony it's a great viewing spot but it means that we are far away from the officials and to get up the updates. But there goes the whistle. We will be back underway shortly with a three on two pack advantage for Crime City and a jammer advantage. And that jammer will be Vanilla Slice. As... Do you have an update for us? I do. And my goodness, I'm not a referee. So essentially, uh, we... The Rainy City Jammer has been issued, um, basically did an, an illegal star pass, so they've been issued a penalty for that. But the pivot initiated that pass. So the official review discussed both of those things. So I'm assuming they're both sitting a penalty for an illegal procedure of some kind. Either way, roller derby is happening again. It was a power start for Vanilla Slice. Bump with a C is now back on. The other rainy blockers are now back on. It's a party. Let's play roller derby. Yeah, everybody's back on track. That's what we like to see. Vanilla Slice has already picked up eight points and is now looking on the third scoring pass. Bump with the C has the start stashed again. As you can see, he's held at the back there. Nasty's there. Yas has pivot there, who's been everywhere in this game, to be fair. Nuggins there as well. Yas has the ability to teleport through space and time. That's my only explanation. I think Yas has been cloned. Yes, I think that too. Vanilla Slice picks up four, adding to their total of 12 now on the jam. And here we're starting to get, this is the biggest differential of the game so yes. far. Uh, now we've got a 31-point uh, game. That's mathematics. And Uma Thumpin has received the star and she has received a high block and is sitting in the box as a jammer. Wow. Crime City choose to ice her in that box, so they will have a full 30 seconds to play with mm -hmm. in this power jam start. As a result of the previous official review, Rainy City did lose the official review, so they don't have the chance to discuss anything again although I'm wondering if the penalty may be about to be rescinded we will uh, not speculate we will bring that to you if it is the case I did say may yes <laughs> I was wrong just Doing a quick little bit of maths, in the 18 minutes that we've had of the second half, the halftime score was 69-62 in favour of Rainey. So far in this half, it's 60 points to 20 in favour of CCR. Yeah, so Crime are having that second half that they need. And Curly Horse so fast down the outside for that power start. Picks up lead for Crime. A blocker lost to the box for Crime, the team in yellow. But no bother for Curly Hall. Well, that was a little bit of bother. They took a knock to the inside, but they have returned to the track. They reset, they take the line again, and this time they're not hit by somebody else, which is lovely as a jammer. I'm wondering if Uma Thumping picks up two penalties. 
Because the fact we're over 30 seconds in this jam and they have not returned to track. We can't see it on the scoreboard, but we it is an entire it is a possibility. Um, we is just don't know. She is she's standing it now, and it, it has been a minute elapsed. So I think that's a, a reasonable inference to make. Either that, or we've gone back to 2013 and one minute penalties. Simpler times. <laughs> Uma Thumpin now with the star takes. A little hit to the outside, resets in the straightaway. It's blow me and Yas, that combination again with the drawback. Yeah, it's not a fun wall to be part of. Nice bit of shielding offence there, offered up by Little Fish. And Carly Hall gets through, picks up another four, 16 and counting. And Uma Thumpin completes the initial now. Yep, there's a no pass, no penalty, so that's good. Good hit from Rollo, good take out there, which was right in front yeah. of us on that camera. Really beautiful work there by Rollo. 138 with a 16 point jam for Crime City Rollers and 89 to Rainy City All Stars. Rainy taking a timeout, understandably. There has been a heck of a lot gone on in the last few jams. While we've got that time out, I just want to give, show some love to Gendered Intelligence, who are a registered charity that work with increasing understanding of gender diversity and to improve the quality of life for, for the trans community. They're trans-led and trans-involving grassroots organisation, which runs training, campaigns and support services for trans and gender non-conforming people. We're very, very pleased to give them a platform here at Anarchy 7. So please check out their website at genderedintelligence.co.uk. And you can also make a donation to their website or keep an eye out on the, for the QR code on the stream. We love gender intelligence. So, just, so much good work that they're doing. Yeah, just a little bit of an update. Uh, and of course, this is a very different second half than the first half. Uh, Rainy have only had three leads this half. So we've, got, we've had 12 jams. So by my maths, that is a quarter of leads, 25% lead in this half. And would you believe it? It is just under 10 minutes to go. This, this half feels so different. It does. Like, it feels like the time has flown by. And the first half didn't feel like it dragged because it was great. And very exciting, yeah. but just feels very different. Oh, Norley with a big old cheesy grin, picking up lead for Rainy City All Stars. This is what the team in purple need right now. Says Reggae has stashed the star, but again, Yas as pivot isn't looking at the minute to receive the star. They're too busy holding back Norley with help from Dimawa. Uh, Nepo Baby being lost to the box along with Banshee, I believe. That's fake. Oh, uh, no, crispy, crispy bats. Crispy bats. Yeah, crispy my bats. So Norley left with a single blocker on the track now I'm to work with. Did Rainy only field three blockers? No, they fielded four, but I think they had somebody go to the box at the same time as someone was returning to track. So. Oh, okay, my eyes are deceiving me. Ah, yes, it was. This is how we do it. I think went to the box. No room at the end, had to come back and has now gone to the box. So oh. Norley going to work now on a Crime City 3 wall in the bottom of your screen. Nepa Baby throwing in this offence. But then resetting to hold Reggae at the front. Lee Jammer is with Gnarly. I think Rainey is trying to empty the penalty box, but people keep going and filling it up again. They just want to keep the uh, penalty box officials company because they're a lovely crowd. They are a very friendly bunch. Knee pad <laughs> flying to the outside just on the bottom left of your screen there. Somebody, somebody's lost their knee. Oh, that was a big old grind there, but seven very valuable points picked up for Rainey. 12 for Crime City, taking them to an even 150. This feels more like crime. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. I don't I know mean, if what I'm saying way. makes sense anymore, but they feel, I feel like they've found themselves a little bit and they've kind of gone, wait a second, wait a second. We can block like nobody else in Europe and we will do that now. 
And they've got and speaker and blocking that one on one blocking from below me at front. Yeah, Which and it does mean that Vanilla Slice is able to pick up lead just by a few inches. Very quick stash the star. Very quick sets. drops the star. It's currently set on the track. Yeah, has Fairy realised that she's not got the star? I, I mean, she can't do much about it, but she's not going. Is she going towards it? I think she's trying to. Yes. Yeah, good eyes there from Fairy Quake. Puts it back on. Shrugs off a hit from below me. Really smart jamming there from Fairy Quake. So it would be so easy to get in uh, a panic there. Big old hit from Banshee. Yeah, that Banshee shutting the inside <laughs> line there. I felt that hip check. I think Vanilla Slice did, which is why Vanilla Slice decided I'm going to go and have a sit down in my bench. Sounds good to me. We have one Crime City Locker sitting in the penalty box. It will be a 4-3 pack advantage as we head into Jam 15. Six and a half minutes of play left to go. So Crime City, if you're just joining us in the yellow on 157, Rainy City in the purple on 96. And we haven't seen uh, well up for it for a little while this half. I was wondering that. Had a few tricky times in the first half with some penalties, but it's such a strong and resilient jammer. I love seeing her with the star. And again, we waxed lyrical about Curly Hoare all game, but... And that her defensive jamming is being really well timed, and you can tell that's something that Crime have drilled well. But there goes well up for it. She is well up for it. It is aptly named. Picks up lead for Rainy City. Curly taken to the outside by Nepo Baby. So it was a combination of Nepo Baby and Crispy Bats. Crispy Bats did pick up the penalty. Curly Hall removing the star now. Yaz with the pivot stripe but curly hall going actually i've got this yaz completes the initial and then yaz sticking to the day job and bringing down well up for it a couple of big hits just at the end there no points picked up on that last pass oh no one picked up for rainy city my apologies so five uh which takes them over the century and holding crime city uh, scoreless in that last jam, which is no mean feat. Good jam there for the team in purple. Halen from the north of England. Bringing the storm down on this sunny Saturday in Crystal Palace. So we have Norley with the start up against Reggae. Yeah, snarly little start there. Reggae spinning around, trying to find a gap between Rollo and Uma Thumping, and does, gets through, picks up lead. To quote the great Kylie Minogue, she's spinning around to get out <laughs> of her way. I, I mean, that's, that's not the exact lyric, but you know, I'll take that. It's been a long day. But the star stash has worked for Norley. Norley has got through. Do you know what? Norley's such a consistent jammer. Like, every, when I watch them, I, I just... I trust them. Do you know what I mean? I trust them with their jamming. Like, they, they are so quick when they don't have the lead. They get the star stash. They are really well drilled as a jammer. And it is a joy to watch. I love Roller Derby. And there are two jammers now that are absolute joys to watch. Vanilla Slice and Fairy Quake. It must be said, I've no, I don't think I've ever watched a jammer and gone, don't want to watch you again. Like, every time I watch a jammer, I'm just like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Yes, but you shouldn't be doing that when you're on track blocking. No, it's true. <laughs> I tend to fangirl less on track, albeit. Vanilla Slice scrambling here against it's a no from me. Lovely wall here from Rainy and a lovely crumbly snarly wall there from Crime crumbling and reforming around Fairy Quake. As Yaslin tries to take out it's a no from me just to try and break up that Rainy wall. The clogging and the zonal defense going on here from Rainy City, just absolutely stunning work. And it does get Fairy Quake out for lead. And Nepo Baby forces Vanilla Slice off to the inside. You can actually see the shoulders drop on Vanilla Slice then. It's like, oh no, I've got to go back and get past them all again. 
Nice patient work here that from time. Fairy Quake and the pack met by Yaz on the out. Has points in the pocket, so calls the jam. At this point, we're two and a half minutes to go. You know, Rainy know this isn't a win now because you're not going to put up 55 points in two and a half minutes. It would be impressive. May maybe Curly Hall could do it. Maybe Curly Hall could do it. But she's not playing for Rainy City. So at this point, Rainy have got to remember, we're playing for rankings. Let's yeah. close that differential. Let's be smart when we have lead. Let's shut down uh, the jams when we've got control. I tell you what, I've known well up for it for some time. Well up for it is, you know, has put up a 23 and 24 point jam earlier today. And they have to star now. Let's they see don't if she have can lead, do it. though. Oh. oh, I want to watch this. Please, camera, stay on the jammers. <laughs> Let's have this foot race. Curly Hall controlling her pack. Going, guys, guys, we got this. I'm the queen of Sweden. It's fine. Listen to what I say. Say, Curly, I think, decided didn't need to get involved no. in the jammer game. The clock's in their favour. The scoreboard's in their favour. Burn when you've a bit got, of time and you could end it on this jam. When you've got a jammer as experienced as Curly Hall, like, she's not going to be like, oh, you know, it's a foot race. I've got, to, I've got to show off. I've got to do what I do best in the jam because actually what you do best is know the game really well and know Absolutely. where you're at in the game. Absolutely. So one minute on the game clock, Reggae and Norley with the stars. Norley tries the out, tries the in, finds the in, gets the lead status, and the crowd love it. As Reggae pushing at the front, does just get through, completes the initial pass. Norley coming in, looking to pick up a few points to eat into that. Reggae Different tries the in. And Stuck on Dr. Rildo, so De Mauer comes in and opens the door for Reggae. Yeah, lovely defensive hold here from both teams. Again, just filling these gaps. You know, if a jammer finds space on the outside, they're met with another blocker further up. So this kind of zonal defense that the teams have settled into in this second half is just really lovely. Norley swimming through those blockers. I love her swimmer arms. She picks up four points. Reggae is on a scoring pass. And all oh, that is going to be the unofficial score. Whistle. Oh, oh no, no, Time no, out. no, no. I did wonder, I did look, when the jam was called, there were still a couple of seconds left. And the question was, was the timeout called just in time? And the officials have decided it was. think there will be two seconds left on the clock. And we're going to have another jam. More rollers, RB. More bang for your book, jams. as they would say. And the audience certainly want one more jam. I like to think that if you're listening on stream, you are too clapping your hands and stamping your feet and calling for one more jam, even if you can't be heard. We, we hear you. We hear you across the air. There will be one more jam, but tomorrow we will have five more games for you. So don't, don't forget, join us at 9 o'clock British Summer Time for Stockholm versus Birmingham. We will then have Helsinki versus Rainey at 11. Stockholm return to the track to face Tiger Bay at 1. 3 o'clock we'll see Crime City against Nothing to Lose. And the last game of the weekend at 5 p.m. tomorrow, Helsinki and London Brawling. And we now have an official timeout. Having an official timeout for some scoreboard issues, apparently, according to one of our spies down in the audience who's just messaged me. So we now, yeah, official timeout to put two seconds back on the clock. Yep, so we have two seconds back on the clock for the restart. And we've got both teams standing at their benches because they know this will be... Uh, we've got, oh, we've got a lovely tweet from Pip's Pet Portraits watching Anarchy 7 with Phoenix. And Phoenix, I'm assuming, is this gorgeous dog. But let's pay attention to what's going on on track. Fairy Quake with a massive hit, picks up lead status, but is reabsorbed into the pack. Vanilla Slice fighting their way through. Fairy Quake in a scrum of yellow there, but makes it through on the initial. 
this is a nice way to end. The, if you're going to lose a game, it's nice to end with lead status in the last jam. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Very quick. Goes to work. Picks up the four. And Vanilla Slice, with star in hand, isn't having any luck against this flat two wall of purple blockers. And just very quickly, I'll give a shout out to Salen, who is watching with Darby and Cats, watching their buddies Vanilla Slice and Ellie for CCR. Darby and Animals, what wall could we ask for? Vanilla Slice now completes the initial pass and Fairy Quake goes, do you know what? I'm going to call it while I'm in control. That's the game done. It is unofficial, but the score is 162 to 116. And you know what? Fair play to Rainy City. That was an incredible first half. Crime did get the better of them in the second half, but it was never easy. No. It never went, oh, well, this is a safe game now. Like, it no. was really... There were, well fought. There were long stretches where crime getting lead or Rainey were being held scoreless or both. But crime won, it was very much bit by bit by bit. It wasn't the big 20 plus point jam to sort of blow the score wide open. But in that second half though, I do want to point out that Crime City did pick up a hundred points to 47 for Rainey. And with that, we will leave you be to the rest of your evening. We do hope to see you back tomorrow at 9 a.m. bright and early for Stockholm versus Birmingham Rollers Derby. I've been Loud and Queer. I am King Crazy. We've been joined on production by the lovely Beatrix, and we hope you've all had a fabulous time with us on the stream at Anarchy 7. See you very soon. <laughs>